There aren't words to describe what happened on October 7th, other than the face of evil was revealed for the entire world to see. And we stand as one with you, with Israel. The October 7th attack by Hamas and the start of Israel's most devastating war on Gaza in history was a galvanizing moment for conservative Christian broadcasters in the United States. The Lord, talking to Israel, will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. I want to say to people, it's time for you to get to Israel. And when you get here, you are in this place as a watchman on the wall. There have been calls for global prayer gatherings, fundraising drives to buy bulletproof vests. We heard the need for these life-saving protective vests. The IDF doesn't have enough with the hundreds of thousands of reservists. Across the conservative Christian landscape, the message from Christian Zionists has been loud and clear. This is not just a suggestion that we should pray for Israel. This is a biblical mandate that we should pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Christian Zionism is a belief that Israel plays a key prophetic role in the return of Jesus. So Christian Zionists believe that everything that happens with regard to the state of Israel from its founding in 1948 to the war that is occurring right now in Gaza are fulfillments of prophecy in the Bible. Tonight, Christians here in Israel and in the United States and in Canada and all over the world are watching what's happening and asking critical questions. Is this horrific war in Gaza part of end times Bible prophecy? Every time since the founding of Israel when there have been major wars, uh, American evangelicals who are interested in prophecy have gotten very excited about the possibility that this war is the war that signals the beginning of the return of Jesus to earth, which they believe will happen and they believe Israel and wars conducted by Israel will be central to that. Every time there's a major conflict in the Middle East, uh, the, the prophecy talk really ramps up. And I know everybody's been saying that forever, but it's kind of looking like, you know, Jesus might be coming. The talk of a holy land promised by God to Jews, his chosen people, an apocalyptic war signaling the end times and the resurrection of Jesus who would save all Christians, sounds to many as fantastical and weak grounds on which to base an understanding of global geopolitics. However, this is a fundamental theological belief of more than 80 million Americans who call themselves evangelical Christians, many of whom firmly support Zionism, the political ideology underpinning the state of Israel. Led by charismatic and deeply political preachers who understood the power of the pulpit and transferred it to the airwaves through radio and TV, conservative Christians have had a significant impact on U.S. politics for decades. Their success as broadcasters meant presidential candidates from Ronald Reagan to Donald Trump sought their endorsement. Not only it's so good to have you with us. And often sought their policy input too. Evangelicals really punch politically far above their weight. So white evangelicals are far and away the biggest supporters of Donald Trump, for example. And despite representing a small proportion of the population, they do turn out to vote. So yes, they do have a lot of power. They also have a lot of lobbying organizations. And uh, one that's immediately gonna come to mind in this context would be, of course, Pastor John Hagee's Christians United for Israel. Those of you who are watching across America and around the world, Today, the Jewish people are at war for their very survival. John Hagee is one of the most well-known of the prophecy-oriented conservative evangelicals. He's been doing this for many decades. He's been very involved in political organizing for Israel. Israel, you are not alone. Israel, you're not alone. What I noticed about his message when he was at the pro-Israel rally is that he really downplayed the parts of what he believes that would be offensive to American Jews. So he doesn't say uh, anything about, uh, you know, this is the end times are coming, this Jesus is going to come again, Jews have to convert in order to be saved. And he doesn't say anything like that. 
The notion of Jews needing to give up their religion, having to convert to Christianity if they want their souls saved at the end times, doesn't come up too much in the evangelical broadcasts since October 7th. It almost doesn't need stating, since it's a core part of the end times narrative. Those who believe it have been taught that non-Christians simply won't survive. The other reason it's not said explicitly is because it's anti-Semitic. Indeed, some of the most prominent Christian Zionists have, at one point or another, been caught saying something anti-Semitic, and yet Israeli leaders, especially Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, have courted these preachers and their congregations. Reverend Franklin Graham, the first major evangelical leader to visit Israel since the war began. Franklin Graham, he's the head of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Now that is an organization with a lot of money, influence, and power. And he heads this organization called Samaritan's Purse. So Graham, after the October 7th attacks, he indeed met with Netanyahu. So what does Netanyahu get out of a meeting like that, a photo op like that? Well, it's, it's a nod to American right-wing Christians that he is their friend, right? They see him and Franklin Graham getting along. It reinforces this sort of special relationship. The Bible says that there is a time for peace and a time for war. This is a time for war. Netanyahu is definitely speaking to evangelicals when he quotes the Bible. Netanyahu is undoubtedly aware that for American Jews, this war is becoming increasingly unpopular and that evangelicals vastly outnumber Jews in the United States and exercise a great deal of control over the Republican Party. And so keeping that relationship going is to Netanyahu's advantage in maintaining his relationships with Republicans and the support of America uh, for this war. The sprawling network of conservative Christian media outlets also play a vital role in cementing support for Israel's war. There are sporadic expressions of concern and empathy for Palestinian lives lost, but the focus is, by and large, on the need for Jews to defend their land. By the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we ask that you accompany Israel's troops into the battle what sharpens the impact of the messaging is that it's not all sermons and group prayer. Christian evangelical outlets present a lot of their output as though it's news. On the battlefront in Gaza, we're learning that Tuesday was one of the bloodiest days of the war. Religious organizations have had an impact as journalists for quite some time because they used to be clunky and awkward. Now they are much more professional looking and they talk about all the issues of the world and it allows people to get most of their news from these Christian sources and to have that interpretive frame right there. The packaging is a very black and white, good versus evil kind of framing because in their view, the Jews are God's chosen people and God gave the land to the Jews. Any claim to the land by Palestinians is wrong and needs to be defeated. So you know, Christian Zionists, therefore, support the occupation, support the annexation of more land. Yes, we want Hamas to be stopped. We want it to be uprooted and, and eradicated. But if they won't, then we need them removed. If they will leave, fine. If they will be arrested, fine. But they may have to be killed. And so if you knew nothing about that and came upon a sermon or a lecture by a Christian Zionist, you would think that you were looking at a good versus evil, very black and white situation, when in fact, it's much more complicated than that. 